So next we're going to look at the cranial nerves and I start with vision and work my way down. I do like to use a dropped cotton wool ball, although controversial, just because it allows me to compare each side and it's a good indication that the animal can see. Make sure it's something silent and uh, that is easily distinguished by a dog, which is you know, white. Menace response is assessing a lot. It requires intact vision, the facial nerve, the brain pathways in the cerebellum. And so you need to interpret it based on other tests as well. Make sure that you use a finger rather than a flapping hand because the flapping hand will generate uh, air currents which will stimulate the palpebral reflex. The papillary light reflexes assesses the optic nerve, the retina and the ocular motor nerve and the chiasm in between. Make sure you use a bright light. If the animal is very scared and you're using a dim light then the animal's fear will drive papillary dilatation despite that, um, that light and you won't see the reflex. And remember you don't need to see pinprick pupils especially if the animal is scared you just need to see the reflex the ocular cephalic reflex assesses the ocular motor nerves that's three uh, four and six and also the brain stem and you're seeing the eyes remain central as you turn the head from side to side and up and down then we're assessing the palpebral reflex, slightly touch the medial and lateral canthus, that sensation with the trigeminal and motor with the facial. Look at facial sensation all over the rest of the, the face by stimulating the lips and the nostril um, and uh, the external ear. A contraction of the face uh, as a result is the facial nerve and you may see a tongue lick as well. And of course, we can also assess jaw tone by opening the mouth. Uh, and uh, tongue movement by opening in the mouth and if we throw the dog a treat we can see its ability to pick up food and uh, um, swallow.